To really know where we're headed, we need to unveil revolutionary ideas from leaders that are shaping the defense and business industries. Join me on these chats of the future with Redstone Gateway. I'm James Lomax, and this is Uncommon Access. Today, we're talking with Huntsville City Council member John Meredith about the unique challenges facing our city and to get an inside look at what the future of work looks like in our region. Councilman John Meredith, thanks for joining us on Uncommon Access. It is my pleasure to be here, sir. Absolutely. It's an honor to have you here on our podcast. It's an honor to have you here at Redstone Gateway here at the Rocket City Tavern and to just be a part of this. And uh, we're excited. The audience is going to be excited to hear what you have to say. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Some of the audience may not know you, not know who you are, your background, and maybe why you wanted to become a, a city council member in the first place. Well, I'm John Meredith. I'm the oldest son of the civil rights icon James Meredith, most notably known for integrating the University of Mississippi. Um, but uh, his other claim to fame, if you will, is the Meredith March, which was a one-man march from Memphis to Jackson, Mississippi in 1966 to encourage uh, uh, minorities in the state of Mississippi to get out and register and then, of course, actually cast votes. Um, He was shot on the second day of the march. Uh, Martin Luther King and others uh, came in and uh, took up the march from where he was uh, shot um, and continued it uh, uh, down essentially Highway 51 in the state of uh, Mississippi. Uh, During that march uh, is the first time that Stokely Carmichael uh, used and obviously had coined the the phrase black power. Uh, It actually came, he was uh, arrested and detained in Grenada, Mississippi, uh, trying to put up tents in a field for the marchers to to sleep in overnight and uh, did not like the way he was treated in in the length of time he was detained by local authorities and came out and, and talked about the power of, of, of black unity and what could be accomplished when they, they joined forces. And that was the birthplace of black power. Wow. It was also the uh, largest um, uh, march in the state of Mississippi's history and uh, a very successful uh, voter registration drive uh, as well. Absolutely. So that, that's a little bit about your background. Obviously, you have civic activism. Yeah, um, I, I took the the uh, scenic route in, in engaging, particularly politically. Um, while um, I was there when my father uh, was uh, at his political height, uh, growing up, um, every uh, significant uh, office in the state of Mississippi, the candidates would come through the House uh, seeking his endorsement. Mm-hmm. So uh, from a very young age, I saw the value of uh, public participation uh, in the, the, the public policy process governing. Um, I was actually STEM educated medical technologist working in Kansas running a clinical laboratory. Uh, Congress passed the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act, which effectively eviscerated that industry. There was really nothing positive that came out of that law. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the perfect example of congressional overreach on a topic that they were not uh, uh, experts in, and um, they didn't get it right. Um, as part of a clinical lab managers association, we uh, flew, did a fly in to uh, Washington and were immediately laughed out of the place uh, when we tried to get them to change their minds, mm. um, bringing analytical evidence uh, to support our, our positions. Um, that experience uh, stirred something in me, and I think I lasted about a year <laughs> and then uh, resigned from the hospital and uh went back to Mississippi, moved in with my father, worked on that master's degree, and then left for Washington as a middle-aged, unpaid intern. Uh, When I got to D.C., I was fortunate enough uh, to wind up uh, with some good folks um, and wound up initially working as a lobbyist for social issues, uh, managed to get uh, some language in the Carl Perkins Reauthorization Act, which uh, caught the attention of the business uh, lobbying uh, community. And uh, I switched from the social side to the business side. Um, Worked for uh, three different trade associations um, while there uh, until I finally hung out my own shingle. Um, As a uh, business owner, I was a micro business 
owner I had at my height sure. five employees. Um, but uh, we, we did good work and we yeah. got um, um, a lot accomplished, frankly, in the amount of time uh, that we had. So you went from the, the civic, social, you know, really grassroots kind of change to literally being in D.C. and trying to change laws the, the, through the process. So, you know, what brought you throughout all that to, to Huntsville, Alabama and where you are today? Um, my wife. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Met and married the my right wife. The right answer. Yeah, the only answer. Yeah. Um, and while I was in Washington, she is a, uh, a Huntsville uh, native, um, went to Ed White, Maston Lake, and J.L. Johnson. Um, and was doing a one-year, um, I'm going to call it exchange program. Uh, she worked at NASA and um, wound up getting assigned to the legislative shop there at NASA headquarters. And um, that's how I met her, was through uh, um, the legislative shop there. Um, she, she liked what she saw <laughs> and uh, extended uh, her stay in D.C. for a while, um, took a, uh, a, a fellowship on Capitol Hill, uh, worked there for a while. So and, you lobbied her a little bit, too. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, really that's when you know you really have your skills together that's when you're right. able to do that. Um, and then uh, we got married. We were uh, happy in, in the uh, D.C. metropolitan area until that third grandbaby was born, and she called me in, told me she was moving back to Huntsville, and sure hoped that I would join her. Uh, so I quickly said, yes, ma'am, I will definitely be joining you, and uh, we moved down here. Um, I transitioned, uh, well, I let my current contracts expire. Um, you know, uh, it's possible to be a federal lobbyist operating out of uh, Huntsville. They do have direct flights uh, uh, to uh, Reagan and, and BWI on a daily basis, but that got old real quick. Sure. Uh, so I let them uh, fizzle out. And then when the last one expired, um, I found myself in the unique position of being able uh, to write some guest columns for, at the time, uh, Huntsville, uh, Huntsville Times, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a couple of other uh, um, papers um, around the country. Um, and then when AL.com um, bought them and, and consolidated, uh, they asked me to write for them. So um, I became a syndicated uh, political columnist. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I got to cover uh, uh, at least two or three um, state and uh, municipal campaigns, um, really got uh, great access to candidates. And um, I hope... Uh, um, uh, wrote about some unique things and aspects uh, to candidates um, as well as the process. Um, so um, that that was instrumental in providing access to understanding the the mechanisms of who was doing what and how they were doing it, which um, you get a real um, uh, affinity for mm -hmm. uh, when you come from D.C. and knowing and, and seeing how they operate and then seeing it here locally and at the state level. So it was very uh, educational, and I hope I was able to transmit some of that uh, knowledge to my readers. Yeah, and, and now you're literally doing that. So you, you were in the halls of Congress. You were working on legislation in D.C. Yes. You know, what's the difference now that you're working on resolutions and ordinances on a a five-member city council here in the city of Huntsville. You know, what's the major difference there? The major difference is um, the Sunshine Laws. Um, Congress, now I wasn't a member of Congress, um, but we never had a, an issue getting groups, numbers, five, 10, 15 uh, members of Congress together to, uh, to talk about an issue, to work out um, any negotiations and put pen to paper on actual uh, uh, legislative uh, ventures. Um, as a city council person, I can only go to meet with one other council meeting uh, member. So it, it's real tough to get a consensus when you're not allowed to, to talk outside of uh, so, a yeah, council explain meeting. Explain that for some of the people listening to Sunshine Laws and the purpose there. Really, the sunset, Sunshine Laws are, are not what governs uh, the yeah. meetings anymore. And I, I don't know the specific of what law actually replaced it. But suffice it to say that there cannot be a quorum of the city council, three members uh, or more, 
that get together outside of a um, um, duly um, outside of a public meeting that has been duly advertised mm-hmm. and, and accessible to the general public. What if y'all happen to run into each other? I mean, that's that could happen, right? It, I mean, it, a it, restaurant, it, somebody pulls up a chair. It, it hasn't actually happened at a restaurant. Uh, for, to me personally, the first time that has happened was when Huntsville um, hosted the Alabama League of Municipalities uh, maybe a month or so ago. And um, I was uh, talking with Councilwoman uh, Acreage and Councilwoman uh, Robinson came up. And it, the look in the three of our eyes was kind of like, uh, uh-oh, <laughs> we, we can't. So we, you, you, one leaves. Uh, so yeah. we, we do have to honor that. And not that we have to. I mean, we have to, but it's not like a burden. Yeah. It just uh, comes up with the, the territory. So um, we, we, when we do find ourselves in those positions, we hastily uh, get ourselves out of those situations. Uh, technically, as long as we're not talking about you know, active business, um, I think we're fine, but we don't even get close to that line. So that makes it hard to build consensus, right? I mean, it, and think if apply it to business, you know, yeah. me, I meet with, you know, my company, I meet with the, our clients and we bring everybody to the table and that's how you get things done. And I guess it's, it'd be more difficult in a situation where it has to be a public forum. Uh, absolutely does. And again, um, when it is around the council meeting or work sessions, um, the conversation is already uh, agenda. I mean, we, we don't really stray from that. The only straying we do is uh, our, our own personal comments uh, uh, during those meetings. So mm. um, it, it's very um, regimented mm-hmm. uh, when we get together. So you're right uh, in yeah. terms of real collaboration and being able to, to uh, discuss from different perspectives and points of view, it does make it uh, very challenging yeah. uh, to get that consensus. Well, so you, you know, you're the most recent member of the Huntsville City Council um, coming on board um, not that long ago, but you've seemed to got your, your feet under you quite well. Thank and you. you represent, at least in landmass, the largest district yes. out, out of the five districts um, by uh, what I'd say is a long shot. Yes. I mean, even if you just look at a map, it's very obvious. What challenges does that present? And then maybe tell us a little bit about your district that what you think makes it special. Well, um, I'll kind of answer that all in one big yeah. melting pot. Um, I think it's it's the most unique uh, uh, district in the city. We go all the way from that Maston Lake, Pulaski Pike, all the way to 65, Highway 65, not 565, which is included, yeah. but we go all the way to 65. Uh, so it's a huge land mass. I, I like to refer to it as the donut uh, because in the middle Swallow of all is that Madison. is Madison. Yeah. We wrap around it. Um, so um, it's mm-hmm. very unique Um um, certain uh, districts in the city are pretty uh, homogenous, um, but ours is is neighborhood and area centric. Um, the northwest uh, part of our district, uh, completely different uh, issues uh, than, say, the folks out in Limestone County. Um, the folks down Zert Road have a different set of issues than the folks over in uh, Providence. Sure. Um, the folks that are out in Limestone County, be it on the south side by Holiday or north um, in the uh, old railroad bed area, um, have completely different issues. Um, what primarily is of concern um, that I hear out there is uh, anywhere in Limestone County is, is fire protection. Mm. Um, they uh, are outside of that five-mile radius of a, uh, a fire station, and their um, insurance uh, per year can be up to $5,000 more than, say, someone even on Zert Road, but sure. particularly uh, in northwest Huntsville that has an overlapping of those five-mile uh, stations. So. Um, that's one of their highest priorities. Um, there is also a significant um, need for road improvement. Hmm. Um, pretty much everywhere leading from going west from uh, the rotary on um, 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 Old Monrovia Road mm-hmm. by uh, um, uh, Indian Creek yeah. in, in Providence, Maine, all the way out into Limestone County, past Old Railroad Bed. 
um, you know, needs to be widened. Yeah. Uh, you can make the same argument for Slaughter Road south of, of Jeff. Sure. Um, and um, there, there are several other uh, uh, arteries as yeah. well. Um, there is a definitive lack of outdoor recreational opportunities uh, for most of the folks around the donut. Um, there are, I believe, only two city uh, maintained parks anywhere around that donut. Um, we are looking into that. Uh, I have uh, just recently had a meeting uh, with the new uh, Parks and Recreation Director uh, in conjunction with the developer uh, to try to see if there's some land that that developer can uh, uh, donate to the city uh, for uh, a park. Uh, so hopefully um, during my tenure, we will be able yeah. to add some some parks to uh, the donut. Pickleball folks. courts, man. Uh, actually, that came up in the meeting. Yep. It's like, what are the measurements for pickleball? So, yep. yes, uh, we are definitely looking at that as well. Fastest sport in America. Yeah. Right um, but we are blessed now where um, the multi-use uh, paths and trails and, um, and, and particularly the Singing River opportunities are, are, are coming to life and, uh, and, and, and um, coming active within the district. Uh, if you look down Zert Road, uh, part of the delay in getting it completed is the installation of those multi-use uh, um, trail paths. Um, and uh, the new park, the Fanning uh, Reserve over there on old Jim Williams, although unfortunately the road is torn up right now and you can't access it, um, it it's a great facility. And once that road is, is uh, um worked on and, and brought back up to, to code, uh, and it'll be a fine road uh, that leads to that fine park. Um, so there, there are some opportunities coming online uh, that provide outdoor recreational opportunities for uh, the folks around the donut. So a lot of quality of life things that you're, you're addressing head on. And you know, really your district, if you look at it too, there's a ton of economic development going oh, on yes. that, that impacts the whole city, really the whole North Alabama. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of it, proud to say, has happened right here at Redstone Gateway. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at all the buildings we have going on here. Um, you know, what, what are some of the challenges, though, that may come in your seat as a city councilman from all the economic development? Um, obviously, we're, we're in pretty good position to recruit and retain some of these businesses, what are some of the things the city can be doing looking down the road, so to say, besides building roads? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very good question. And um, lately, um, what I'm hearing from employers, um, particularly those out in not too far from here in Research Park, um, is um, workforce. Now, we, we all know and we've all heard for quite a while about workforce sure. and, and, and the need for it. Um, but the concern for um, a lot of employers is how do we get the folks from Decatur or Athens or the, the uh, uh, municipalities in, 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 in Lawrence County that are close enough to come to Huntsville here. Um, so uh, the need for regional transportation uh, to move those workers from those multiple jurisdictions is something that's going to uh, need to happen in an organized, coordinated fashion, I believe, in the near future, because um, we do have, a, a, I say we, uh, the city of Decatur has a, a very uh, good workforce that would match up well with a lot of the opportunities that are here in the city of Huntsville or that um, Limestone County kind of region. Um, that would would only uh, help those businesses expand. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, you know so many uh, um, uh, high tech uh, industries coming online out there um, that they don't have to come all the way into the city of Huntsville, but the surface transportation is uh, problematic for them to get to a certain place at a certain time routinely without uh, having to be redirected. Uh, so we need to to make sure that the roads can handle the additional traffic that's coming on board. And also, um, I'm going to like to look into uh, uh, possibly restoring the light rail uh, that used to run from Decatur to, into Huntsville and hopefully locate it somewhere where um, it's a, it's it's not. Uh, problematic for folks that live in Athens to access that line as well. So um, if we do that, then of course you get people out of the cars, yeah. um, which will certainly help as well. That changed life around here significantly. Yes, I mean, sir. you know, so 
How does one even start those conversations? I mean, in your seat, is that something you just pick up the phone and call Athens and say, "Hey, let's talk"? Or? It, it, that's the way I've been doing yeah, it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, it's it may not be the most uh, uh, efficient way of doing it, but I like to think it's a very personal sure. uh, way of doing it. And you know, the one thing you learn very quickly in DC, which translates very uh, well down here, is everything's personal. Everything's a personal relationship and getting things done. Uh, folks do things for their friends that they don't do for people they don't know. Sure. Uh, so you have to establish these relationships. And I think one of the most unique things about my district is the interdependency. For instance, I live off Third Road. There is absolutely no way that I can get from my part of the city of Huntsville to the other side of the arsenal city of Huntsville without going through the city of Madison. Mm. It doesn't exist. So we are independent or interdependent on what the city of, Mad of, of uh, Madison does. Um, also, I have a uh, city of Huntsville residents in Limestone County. Well, Limestone County Commission has a significant uh, role to play. So I need to know who those Lime, not just who they are, but sure. I need to develop relationships with them. Uh, admittedly, my relationships with the Limestone County folks is lagging behind my relationship with the city of uh, Madison folks, but I think I've done a fairly good job of, of, of making those personal relationships and outreaches to the city of Madison um, up and down um, their 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 municipal chain, uh, including the mayor's office, uh, city councilmen, uh, planners, that sort of thing. Um, so um, I'm, I'm working on those relationships. Um, and we mentioned earlier about the need for, say, widening down Capshaw. Well, a lot of the streets, the main uh, arteries in my district are multiple jurisdiction. Uh, Zert Road, I live off of it. Uh, that's county, that's federal with Wheeler, mm -hmm. uh, and that city of Madison as well as the city of Huntsville. That's a multi-jurisdictional road. Anything that gets done down there is going to have to have the approval mm -hmm. and check off of all of those. Uh, Capshaw, the county, the uh, city of Madison, and the city of Huntsville. So it's not as though, like in some of the other districts in town, it's all city of Huntsville, so we only need to deal with, with the mayor and, and, and our folks. Well, out in the fifth district, you've got to go through, through at least two other jurisdictions in yes, a lot give them of to places. to the table, and yeah, yeah. And, and who's going to pay for it? Yeah, you know, I mean, everybody's uh, pointing fingers, and 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 everybody has a different priority. You sure. know, the county priority may not match up with the Huntsville priority or the the city of Madison's priority. So you you really got to work together to iron those things out uh, before um, anything constructive uh, can happen. Yeah. So you've recently unveiled a, a something you've been spearheading for quite a while. I'm, I'm happy to be involved along with a lot of other people uh, in the city of Huntsville and some other great individuals. But the, the Main Street designation that's happening right now yes. to improve small businesses and the aesthetics of Highway 72, a yes. major corridor in, in the area. What was your thought process behind that, and uh, and what exactly is that, and what what's going to happen in the future there for the listeners? Well, what it is is a corridor that runs from effectively um, Memorial Parkway all the way to uh, Jeff Road um, in 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 the district. Um, parts of that corridor, all of it, is part of District Five. But parts of it also include District 1, uh, which is Devin Keith's uh, uh, district, and District 4, which is Bill Kling's district. So once again, <laughs> I have to work with other uh, entities in order to make things happen. Um, but um, in my conversations with business owners down that, that corridor, um, it became very evident that uh, there was a, a lack of leadership uh, leading, you know, preceding me. And um, it's been interesting to sit down and talk with them and find out what their issues were. What did they need from the city in order to help their businesses remain viable? And I was shocked, frankly, in um, how compartmentalized um, it, it went. It, it went. Um, you go from the parkway to uh, Sparkman and Number one or number two, 
when I ask business owners, what can the city do for you, address homelessness. Hmm. Would not have thought that would have been the first or second sure. uh, issue that a business owner would, would discuss or want addressed. Um, so it became quite evident that in order for the those businesses to do their best, we were going to have to uh, engage in that. Um, it actually kind of slowed down uh, the process of, of building up um, mm-hmm. that West Huntsville Highway 72 business yeah. corridor because it was so out of left field. But um, one of the things I like to do is be very collaborative and put all of the pieces into play before we go forward and announce something. So we took a step back. Uh, We reached out to uh, homeless uh, advocates. Uh, We met with uh, the Downtown Rescue Mission. We met with even more business owners um, to try to see what role um, would would make sense for a business association to take. Mm. Um, And we have put people in place uh, so that they are now hitting the ground running and addressing that. Um, Number two, in that particular area, if not homeless, it was blight. Um, So we are putting together and working with uh, departments within the city, uh, such as community development, uh, frankly, HPD, uh, and others to address blight. And, and when I say blight, um, it's not just the abandoned buildings and the, uh, the infill uh, uh, projects that need to be uh, um, developed, sure. um, but also, for lack of better terminology, bad neighbors. Um, there are certain hotels that um, are not um, good neighbors to uh, a restaurants or a, yep. uh, uh, a car dealership. And we want to, to, to encourage them <laughs> to be better neighbors. Uh, it's a nice word. For yeah. not, not only for their neighbors, but it's going to help their businesses as well. Yeah. Um, we truly believe in this concept that the work we do there is going to lift all boats. Um, and the beauty of the association and designation with Main Street is access to just a plethora of experts and resources, not only within the state of Alabama, but also nationally. Um, we are already uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, placemaking and signage and, and other things that will help not only the big guys, but the smallest of, of our businesses. When you have placemaking, when you have uh, streetscape improvements, even those small businesses are going to benefit from that. Um, one of the things that I would love to see is the uh, association providing grants to some of those smaller businesses so that they can can take that next step in what their in particular businesses need to take it to that next level. So I'm really looking forward to that, although obviously that's going to take additional funding. Sure. Um, but um, we, we are uh, well positioned at this point in time to be able to accomplish that as well. Um, you move a little bit further away uh, west, uh, moving west from Sparkman, you quickly come up on Mid City, yep. uh, which is also a part of that corridor. And and I cannot overlook um, the University of Alabama Huntsville and the yeah, executive the, the plaza, exact, yeah. executive uh, plaza That's an awesome uh, project plan. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, we are very anxiously awaiting. Uh, playing a significant role at the uh, um, um, approval, if you will, of UAH. Uh, It is their project. We just want to uh, help make it happen. Um, There is so much potential there um, for not just student housing and student amenities, amenities, yes, but also commercial and retail uh, to service not only them, but the, uh, the business community around it. Um, hopefully, they will even uh, uh, include office space sure. uh, uh, for businesses uh, to, to, to locate as well. Um, I know that um, MidCity is anxiously wanting to uh, connect with Executive Plaza through multi-use trails and that sort of thing so that uh, the students don't have to get in cars and, and yeah. do that. They can just take the trail into Mid-City. And be safe. Absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, so um, again, the priority somewhat shifts away yep. from the homeless 
uh, in, in blight into redevelopment and um, place making in yeah. a way um, that is unique to that portion of the corridor. Um, you get past Mid City, then there's Providence. Um, Providence is um, also working on a I can't call it infill, but they, they have a expansion. nice expansion going yeah. on. Uh, that's a multi-use uh, project cool. that uh, I, I, I'm very big on multi, multi-use to yeah. begin with, but that, that project is, is really going to be a gem. Um, yeah. I, I have to go back to mid city and the metronome uh, mixed use is Extremely another awesome, um, yeah. wonderful mixed use progress uh, project. Uh, so between the two of them, um, I think that corridor is going to um, um, blow up in terms ah, yeah. of um, entertainment of, value and yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, and when the amphitheater comes online, now the corridor really will have a, a a a tourist uh, a component to it. Yeah. We'll be bringing in folks from all over the state, all over the region, uh, to see the shows there. And mm. while they're there for the show, um, all those uh, retail opportunities Coffee, exist. Beer. Yes. Shopping. Yes. Or just fun Eating. stuff. Doing the uh, the rock wall climb. Yeah. Hitting some balls at Top Golf. Um, so there's just uh, so much, um, uh, so many varied activities yeah. just along that little portion of the corridor. And uh, we just want to expand that out. Uh, well, it's, and, an, it's an ambitious project. I mean, you t- to take this on from what used to be. And still, you know, it's just a highway. It's yeah. a way to get from one place to the other. Instead of being point A and point B, though, you're making it a place in itself. And I think that's, that's Absolutely. Big. This is a little uh, uh, ahead of my, my day, but I know it used to be Restaurant Row, and it used to be a, a yep. happening. Fog cutter. Yes. Yep. Um, so we want to bring some of that back to that area. I mean, they have given to the city. Uh, quite a bit, and now it's time for the city to give back to them. Absolutely. Uh, they are, that little area is a, uh, a retail uh, mecca. It produces an awful lot of taxable income uh, to the city's coffers, and uh, we need to allow them to, to improve that yeah. and even add even more. So we are really looking forward to that. Well, I got some, some quick hits for you. Yes, sir. What most excites you about your job? What most excites me about my job is the dull day-to-day routine stuff that results in empowering the residents of District 5. Um, Back when I first uh, took office, COVID was in full swing, and I would get a lot of phone calls, particularly from seniors, that were concerned about things that showed up on the agenda, um, and I would actually go and make public statements, um, basically repeating what they have told me, um, basically um, standing up for what they wanted out of their their member. And I cast a few votes that were the lone no votes, but sure. those votes represented uh, doing my constituents will. Um, so I, I'm totally happy, and I think that's the most important part of my job is to empower people. Part of the reason I ran for this office was a, a sense of, of not having that, that power, not having my voice heard, not having a phone call returned or an email returned. Um, so I, I have taken this office, and uh, the last thing I want to do is be that guy that I ran against because um, I, I'm going to return that phone call. I think any or that email, I think mm-hmm. any constituent that reaches out to their elected member of, of any body whatsoever deserves the right uh, for that person or that staff response uh, to that, that, that inquiry. So I, I'm always going to, uh, to respond. And for the, the listeners out there that are District 5 people, if by chance you don't get a phone call back or an email back, reach out a second time. Sure. Um, I am only human. Yep. Uh, I have dropped the ball a couple of times in the six months I've been there. I, Not I, often, I'm I, sure. I, I'm no. aware of three people that I didn't return, and they made that second pass. And then when you make a second pass, you get action really yep. quick because that's, right. that's that's what I ran on, and uh, I don't want to be that guy. So I'm definitely Squeaky going wheel. to – Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, so 
for yeah. me, you know, there, there's nothing um, sexy about it, but that's the most heartwarming uh, part of my job is, is making sure that people are empowered, that they know that their viewpoint has been received yep. and hopefully um, acted upon in the way they want it acted upon. Um, the worst part of my job is to get an inquiry and not be able to help someone Got it. and have to tell them, well, I'm sorry. Um, yes, you, your, your road is beaten up. This road is, is in tough shape, but Out I can't hands, get it. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is. Uh, that particular scenario is a, a done on a rating system. And if you don't score, you know, high enough, then there, there's nothing I can do. Um, so that, that's kind of hard, um, uh, when there's just, your hands are tied and you can't help someone, uh, that, that's the toughest part of my job, letting people down. Cause inevitably when someone is complaining about their street and you can't help them, you've let them down. Yeah. So. Well, outside of politics yes, real sir. quick and outside of public service, um, what's your hobby? What do you like to do? I love to play golf. I don't get to do it very often anymore. Um, by comparison, when I was in D.C., I probably played three, four times a week. That's a uh, lobbyist for you. <laughs> indeed. And now I think I'm lucky if I – last year I played – well, it was COVID. So d let's discount the COVID yeah. year. Um, but prior to that, I was probably down to three or four rounds a year. Wow. Uh, so Have you it, played the Arsenal out here? I, I played the Arsenal once uh, as a guest uh, to uh, – um, a, a very good friend of mine. Um, but, um, I golf, I love it, but I don't see myself having a lot of time, uh, to engage in Not it. It's, it's too many hours out of a day. That's right. Um, and this job is uh, seven days a week. There there's weekends. No, no, you, you're working weekends. Well, good. Well, we are incredibly thankful you came on here. Thanks for joining us at Redstone Gateway, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much, and uh, I will say this was wonderful. I'm surprised the time is up already, um, and uh, I'd be happy to come back whenever you need uh, the District 5 City Councilman. You bet. Thank you, Councilman. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you for listening to this episode of Uncommon Access. Our podcast is produced by Redstone Gateway, where the future works. You can find Uncommon Access on major podcast platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, as well as on YouTube. You can find out more about Uncommon Access on redstonegateway.com slash podcast. Special thanks to our recording location, the Rocket City Tavern. We'll see you soon for another chat of the future. Uncommon Access is recorded on location at Rocket City Tavern. The tavern is conveniently located outside Gate 9 at Redstone Gateway and serves up delicious food with an unbeatable atmosphere. Rocket City Tavern is where history and people meet for great food and drinks.